Hi, and welcome to another video by Jim the Car Guy. Today we have a 2006, it's a Ford, it's an Escape, and we're going to be doing front and rear brakes. The reason we're going to be replacing the front and rear brakes is because it's, uh, it's been sitting for a long time, for a couple of years, and there's a lot of rust on everything. So I'm going to, tell, I'm going to show you step by step how to check exactly what's needed and to go about ordering the correct parts before you start taking it apart. So um, we're going to start on the back brakes here and then we're going to continue up on the front. So uh, let me show you what it looks like and uh, let's get started. This is the, uh, the back brakes here. As you can see there is a significant amount of rust on the back of the uh, on the rotors here. You can see there's quite a bit of debris. It's been sitting for quite a few years. So what we're going to do first is we're going to check to make sure that these slide pins in here slide the way they're supposed to. I have a feeling they're going to be no good, but we're going to check it just to make sure. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in here with a screwdriver or a pry bar, and we're going to slowly keep pressure on here to push the piston back into the caliper, and then we're going to check the slide pins. So uh, let's give that a shot, and we'll see how it goes. You get in here with a, a screwdriver or a pry bar, and you just keep constant pressure on it. It's going to be a little hard to get this one in, but it's just pushed in, actually. All right, so we, now we push the piston back in. Now we want to see if these slide pins here are working properly. And the way you do that is we're just going to slide the caliper. It's actually fairly rusty. So we well, it did slide fairly easy. So we're going to take it apart and we're going to see what it looks like. If anything, we'll change the hardware in through here and we're going to try to save these, um, these calipers if we can. The piston did push in, so that's a good thing. So uh, let's go check the other side just to make sure, and uh, we'll order the parts we're going to need for it, and we're going to get started on it. So that piston pushed all the way in. Let me go check the other side just to see. Same exact thing on the other side. You want to push that piston back in, and the way you do that is get in here like this. And as you can see, that piston pushed right back in without a problem. See if the caliper slides a little bit. And the caliper does slide. So uh, at this point, I think we're going to try to keep the course down for them. We're going to try to keep the course down, and we're just going to get the caliper hardware kit, and we're going to change the hardware kit up inside here. So, uh, all right, let's get set up, and we're going to start taking this apart, and uh, we'll see what, what we run into. Now, obviously, we are going to be changing these rotors, so it doesn't matter. We can beat them with a hammer if we need to get them off because it is pretty much oxidized on here too. So, uh, all right, let me get set up and we're going to uh, get started. Okay, so now we know that these sliders actually slide because we did push them back in just to make sure that they slide. They're a little bit, um, a little bit uh, dry, but we should be able to lubricate them and they should be okay. All right, so now we know that's all right. Um, Next thing is we're going to, we, this rotor has to come off the car, obviously, and as you can see, it's oxidized on there really badly. You have two alternatives. One, you can get in there and you can um, use an impact gun to actually hit it around through here to break it loose, but I'm going to just take the caliper off and I'm going to just hit it in the back and we're going to see if it comes off pretty freely without banging the daylights out of it. So, uh, all right, first thing we're going to do is we're going to take out down underneath here, we're going to take out this bolt here and this bolt here, and we're going to take the caliper and relocate that up to the top. So, uh, all right, let's get started. Now in the back over here, I think it's an 8 millimeter, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it's an 8 millimeter bit to take this out. Now, the bottom here, you can get in here with just a regular ratchet, and you can remove it. It's not a big deal. They just come right out like this. Up on top, it's going to be a little bit more difficult, and I'm going to show you why. So we're going to take this and loosen this all the way up first. Now this one, as you can see, you've got the shock in the way right here. So you can't get in here because of the shock being there. Well, you can get in there, but once you move this to take it out, you're not going to get it back out of there. 
So what we're going to do Okay, what we're going to do is we can get in there with just an extension like this and we could put it in like this But as you can see even an extension it hits right here. So uh, Snap-on actually makes a, uh, a socket with an extension that actually has a very slight bend on the end of it. So here you can see it's nice and firm on here but when you put it on here you have that little bit of a swivel and uh, Snap-on made this a long time ago makes it a little bit easier to get this off of here. So you can come in through the back like you normally would. And as you can see, you have a little bit of play that you can actually get it out without farting or without having a problem. Take this off. I'm just using this to pull these pins out now. All right, these are the two sliding slide pins, and we're going to lubricate these before we put them back in. And we're going to take this caliper off and just relocate it up for now. We are going to take all this debris out of here. As you can see, it's been sitting for a long time. We're going to come in here with a hammer and we're going, to, we're going to bang it here a couple of times to see if we can get it off. If not, we're going to vibrate it right over here to get it out. So. As you can see, it came off pretty easily. Now, to take this off, be careful when you take this off because sometimes the parking brake shoes are rusted inside the drum in the back over here. And when you rock it back and forth, just go nice and easy so you don't rip the shoes off the vehicle. Now, this side came off real easy. The other side that I already did was a pain in the rear end. These shoes were rusted solid inside, inside the drum here itself. Or, this is actually a rotor but the parking brakes actually apply right in here. Alright, so now this is nice and, nice and clean here. Where the road is going to go back onto it is clean, there's no rust on that. But if it was rusty in here, you would take a disc and you would clean up all that rust that would be on there. But it's really not rusty at all, it feels really good. So we're not going to worry about that. Next thing we're going to do is we're just going to put our, you know what? before we do that, we're going to clean this up a little bit. As you can see, there's a lot of rust on here. So we're going to clean this up a little bit. Uh, you can just tap it to break off any excess rust on here. You wouldn't normally have to do this on a car that it less has been sitting for a long time. We're going to clean some of this off. going to go crazy and file it down too far. Otherwise you're going to wind up with a knocking noise when you apply the brake. So we're just going to take a little bit off. I use the file, but you can also use the disc here to clean it up real good too. Which I'm going to. 
again. We're not going to go crazy with it, just a little bit. Normally you wouldn't have to do this, but when rust is an issue like this, you may have to. Now I'm going to lubricate this a little bit now just to get it on here really pretty well, front and back. Wherever the brake pad is going to touch, you want to lubricate it. Normally, anybody knows I always do this later on, but in this case, I'm going to do it now here so I can get back in here. I'm going to put the good amount of grease on there. Next thing we'll do is put your rotor back on and just slide it on all the way as far as it will go. And now we're ready to replace our brake shoes. These are going to be stuck in there because they've been sitting for a long time. So we're just going to tap these out. Same thing on this one. going to lubricate the, uh, where the sliders are going to go, and then we're going to lubricate the sliders and we're going to reinstall them. You're not going to push them in too far, you're just going to push them in until they're flush right there. Same thing on the next one. next thing we're going to do is going to put our brake pads in. I always lubricate here because these have to slide into the, uh, to the piston on the caliper. So if you lubricate it, it uh, makes it for an easier, easier for it to slide in. Same thing on this one here, just lubricate it where it's going to slide into the caliper. I'm going to put a little bit of grease here because it has to slide into the caliper here too. Okay, I'm just going to put this in here. You may need a screwdriver to work this back and forth, but we'll see. Alright, next thing we're going to do is we're going to slide the caliper back into where it belongs, the bottom one in first. Tighten up these uh, the bottom bolts. We're just going to do them by hand for now. And before you tighten them up all the way, we're just going to catch the bottom one, and then we're going to come up and catch the top. One. Now that we have them caught, both top and bottom, we can tighten everything up. The only drawback about this socket is it does not hold the socket on there very well. But it does work when you need that, just that little bit of a, I think it's like a 12% bend or whatever it is. From what I recall, anyway. Alright, we'll tighten this up. And that's it. We're all set. All right, well, let me just show you exactly what we did. Okay, we uh, unbolted the caliper here and here, took it off and swung it out of the way, 
lubricated everywhere that the brake pad is going to go. We made sure that the surface was clean where the rotor was being mounted back onto, which it was. We lubricated the, uh, the brake pads when they slid into the, uh, into the caliper here and in the back over here. And we tightened up this bolt on top and this bolt on the bottom. All right, so we're all set. All right, so nothing more to worry about here. This is all set. I did the, the other side uh, earlier. And uh, now we're going to go up to the front and we're going to do the same thing to the front. Okay. First thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that this caliper slides as they did in the back. So what we're going to do is put a screwdriver or a pry bar in here and we're going to keep a little pressure on it just to get it to slide a little bit. And we're going to see if we can save these calipers. It is sliding, so that's a good thing. And we're just going to push the piston all the way back in before we do anything with this here. All right, pistons pushed back in. Now we're going to check the sliders. They are tight, but they do slide. So we probably can lubricate these and save the, this caliper too. All right. And the way you take this, uh, this anti-rattle clip off right here is you just put a little bit of pressure on it and push up. And then you pop it right out. A little bit of pressure on the uh, on the clip, push it up like this. If that don't work. We're going to try it by hand. Pull it and just get behind it. And you can pop it right out like this. Now we're going to use this over again, so don't lose it. And next thing we're going to do, is we're going to come up in the back, right over here and take this cap out here and there should be another one right here we'll take this out and that's just to keep any kind of road debris from getting in and clogging up the uh, the allen key that we need to remove all right don't lose these because you're going to need to reuse these again now the uh, the allen key back here is actually it's a nine millimeter and we're going to take that out and we're going to relocate that caliper. So let me take out this one and this one and we're going to pull this up and out of the way for now. Before we take this one all the way out, we're going to loosen the top one too because sometimes if they're tight, you'll rotate the caliper in there. So we're going to take these bolts, unscrew them all the way out. We're going to take them out and we're going to lubricate these to reuse them. side for now because we're going to lubricate them before we put them back in. So what you do is you rotate and you pull them out at the same time. Same thing on the top one too. It's already disconnected. But we're just going to rotate it and pull them out. these later on. All right, next thing we're going to do is we're going to take that rotor, I'm sorry, we're going to take that caliper and we're not going to leave it hanging. We're just going to relocate them off to the side like this for now. And then we're going to continue. We're going to take off, obviously, this brake pan is trash. Now we're going to take off this bracket back here also. We have to remove the bracket from the car. And the way you remove that bracket is right in the back over here is a uh, probably an 18 millimeter here and an 18 millimeter here so we're going to take those two off and we're going to take that bracket out now if you've got air you can use air to do it um, it's a little bit of a tight squeeze in there so 
So I'm just going to use a breaker bar to snap it loose. Same thing on the top one. Now those are pretty tight. When it comes to the saddle, the saddle bolts, I always use, or I try to use a half inch ratchet. It's a little heavier. Makes it a little bit easier for you. First part about this job is all the spiders that drop down on you while you're working on it. All right, don't lose the bolt. We're going to need that again. Okay. Now we are going to clean this up a little bit here. I'm going to use a, uh, a file to actually file a little bit to clean out some of the rust here. If you have a sandblasting machine, by all means you can use that. I don't have one here, so I'm just going to clean it up the best I can with this file. And um, we're going to get this rotor off and we'll put the new one back on. So, And again, the way to get this rotor off is you can get in here with a pry bar. And you can pry on it like this through the back and tap it off like this. It doesn't really matter in this case because, as you know, these rotors are no good. Okay, now, as you can see, looking at this, this is pretty rusty in here. So we are going to clean this up a little bit with a disc. We're going to clean this all out in here, get all the rust out of it, and to clean up this a little bit here so that the rotor doesn't interfere with it going back on. Once I get it cleaned up, then I'm going to come right back. If you don't have a disc, like this, you can get in here with a razor blade, you can get in here with a scraper. You just want to make sure that all of this rust is off of here, or you're going to wind up with a pulsating pellet. So let me clean this up, and then we'll come right back, and we'll, uh, we'll wrap this job back up and get it out the door. Okay, now that we have this all cleaned up over here, we're going to slide the new rotor on. Now, as you can see, this rotor moves around a little bit while you have it on here. You want to keep it stable, just screw a lug nut onto it to hold it in place while you get the rest of the, uh, uh, the brackets and everything put back on. All right, we're going to lubricate everywhere that the brake pad is going to touch. We're going to lubricate it with a lot of grease because this is extremely rusty. So we're going to lubricate this real well here. I know I'm going to hear something from somebody saying, how come you didn't clean off all those cobwebs and stuff? But if you saw the underneath part of this car, you'd be underneath the here for 20 years trying to clean these cobwebs out. He's got to go get this thing detailed after he gets it back on the road. All right. We'll put the bracket back on to its position where it came off. And then those 18 millimeter bolts that we previously took out in the back, we're going to reconnect those. Now before you tighten them up, we're going to catch both top and bottom bolt. And then we're going to screw them in. As long as you got them both caught, you can tighten everything up. Just so you know, I am going to clean these rotors off here. So if you see this grease, don't worry about it. I'm going to clean it off. Tighten it up with the breaker bar. If you have an air gun, you can tighten it up with your air gun. The calipers the mounting bracket is now tight.
These rotors I did clean them before to get that grease off when they're being uh, shipped. All right. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to install our uh, our brake pads. Now, remember the uh, the outer pad pretty much just lays right in there like this here. Not really a big deal. It slides nice and easy. This one we have to knock this one out here because it's actually in the rotor. I mean in the caliper itself. So we're just going to set this up here for now. And we're going to pull it. And take it out like this. And we're going to put the new one back in. The same way. We're just going to take a little bit of grease. Put a little grease on here like this. It makes it go a lot easier. Right? Put it back in here. And you can push it all the way in. All right. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to lubricate where the slide pins go. Caliper back in. And last, we're going to take the slide pins. We're going to clean them off a little bit too because they are a little bit dirty. Not a big deal though. Just wipe them off with a rag, use brake cleaner, whatever you want. Okay. And then just put lube on both of them so they slide nice and easy. And then put them back in where they came out. I'll bring you in and show you in a second. I'll put them back in where they came out right here. And then we'll tighten them in. We're going to tighten them in by hand for now. Just to make sure that they're caught and they're not cross-threaded. Now you will have to push the caliper in a little bit and then you turn it by hand until it catches. And then we're going to do the same thing on the bottom down here. You will have to push the caliper in a little bit and then turn this in. And then once you've got it caught by hand, then you can tighten it with the ratchet. So let's do that now. And then you can tighten both the uh, caliper hold down bolts tight. Same thing on the upper. Right. Now, I've seen a lot of guys just throw these away. Don't throw them away. Make sure they go back in the back where they previously came out of. Otherwise, you're gonna have a problem with debris getting inside here. Here. And here. And the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put that clip back on. And the anti-rattle clip. Now, any way that this clip is gonna to touch, you wanna to lubricate. It's gonna to touch here, so you wanna lubricate it. It's gonna to touch here, so you want to lubricate that also. And the way you get it back on is you put it in like this. And you could put it back in the same way you previously took it off. Put it in like this and just squeeze it and it pops right back in. Just make sure that, uh, I'll show you. Just make sure that these little tabs pop back in behind that lip back inside there so you're in a good position there. Same thing here. All right, so let's recap. We cleaned up the face of the rotor, where the rotor's going on onto, that, onto the hub. 
We put a new rotor on. We cleaned the rotor off with brake cleaner to get that residual grease off there. Uh, we put the uh, new slide pin. We greased the slide pins here and here. We tightened both slide pins up. We put our new brake pads in, and we lubricated everywhere that the brake pad is going to touch. All right, that's it. This side is all done. Next thing we're going to do is go the other side and do the exact same thing. All right, like always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.